Thank you. This is very important because Islam believes in revelation. And the, the struggle for us with the revelations that Muhammad brought, he brought nothing new. So that's the first point. We're, we're, there was nothing new. Uh, worship one God, we learned that from Abraham. Not eating pork, that was Moses. Uh, you know, uh, he said something that we should always have a, uh, a spirit of uh, gratefulness for God, you know. Well, that was from the prophets. So what did, what did Muhammad bring something new? There's nothing new. So, However, they believe that there was revelation for him. Number one. Number two, uh, Muhammad's revelations always came after a spell. And he would shiver, shake, and say, Dathiruni. Once they cover him, the words he's saying, they say it's the words of God. When you dig deeper, you say, well, it's God telling Gabriel, and Gabriel telling him what to talk. Well, that's a problem for us as believers because uh, Muhammad never talks to God. The whole Quran was dictated by Gabriel. Well, for us in the, in the whole scripture, the whole Bible, from Abraham on, they talk, communicate, even Noah communicated directly with God. So this is one big question mark for me that... Um, uh, that Muhammad really never gets his message from God. He gets it from this angel. His, the angel's name is Jibril, but the angel never gives his name. He calls him Jibril. He calls him Gabriel. So that's one of the struggles for us as we study Islam. However, for us, divine revelation is a good strength because when they say the Injil has been corrupted, you respond by saying Astaghfirullah or by English saying God forbid. The word Astaghfirullah means God forgive you for blasphemy. So whenever you say that, I always start with Arabic. Even if they don't speak Arabic, they know this. They use it in the mosque, they use it everywhere. When you do something that's against God's rule, when it's haram, not halal, they say, oh, astaghfirullah means I'm asking God's forgiveness because I'm doing something bad. Okay? So whenever they say the angels have been corrupted, I always say, astaghfirullah, God forbid. Who's stronger? Humans or God? They say, no, God is stronger. Well, who can change God's word? Um, we were giving out Bibles in southern Spain. And two guys come up, Mustafa and Kamal. Uh, sorry, Mustafa and Munir. Mustafa starts, what is this book in your hand? I said, the Injil of Jesus. He goes, the Injil has been corrupted. I said, astaghfirullah. God forbid, God forgive you. He goes, why are you saying that? I said, if all the Christians wanted to change the Bible, who will win, God or the Christians? So he said, God will win. I said, so what you just said insults God. So Munir says to Mustafa, don't say anything. I will take care of this man. I was, not res I was respectful. I didn't say anything. He looked at me. He goes, I've memorized one-fourth of the Quran. I said, good job. I always show respect. Always show respect, even if I disagree with them. He said to me, I want to recite chapter Yunus, the chapter of Jonah from the Quran. I said, go ahead. So he's reciting in Arabic. I'm praying. While I'm praying, he starts forgetting the verses. He fumbles. He gets upset with himself, and he leaves. When he leaves, Mustafa says, can I take a New Testament? Can I take an Injil? I said, yes, here's your Injil. Why Mustafa changed his mind? Because one, I did not attack Muhammad. I did not attack the Quran. I did not attack Islam. I'm saying, if you believe in God, you should not be saying that God's word can be corrupted. You don't want to read the Bible, don't read the Bible. But to say that the Bible has been changed, this is, not, this is impossible, because you as a Muslim believe in divine revelation. You as a Muslim believe that God exists. So you saying that God is weaker than man, that's impossible. And we've seen that this approach works a lot because you're approaching the subject theological. Now sure, we ask people to approach it also logical and historical. Absolutely, these are important. But the first step with a Muslim is theological. Did God send Jesus? Yes. Does Jesus lie? No. This means Jesus' words are true. Are Christians stronger than God? No, it's impossible. And God has given us, as a ministry, this tool to use with many people. We've trained now more than 24,000 Christians how to share their faith. And many times I get an email or a letter or somebody calls me and says, Fuad, I use this. And the Muslims that I was talking to really dawned on them that they appreciated the conversation, that they wanted a Bible for themselves. And that's the beauty. Let them read the Bible. Let them find for themselves.